Hello and welcome to my free online workshop, How to Plan a Year of Self-Care. This is a four part video series and this is part three. So my name is Sheree James. I'm a naturopath, a yoga and meditation teacher and a retreat facilitator through my company, Ashima Living. Now, the last two videos, I'll just do a very quick recap. The first video, we looked at what self-care is and isn't, um, some of the barriers and blocks we have towards our own, towards our own self-care, the way we can sabotage our own self-care. And in the second video, we looked at daily routines that we can start to implement, particularly for our health and well-being, and also uh, as a form of spiritual practice as well. Now, in this video, we're going to look at a couple of things we can incorporate once a week to um, address some of our other needs. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is what I call the weekly check-in. And I really wanted to come up with a non kind of rigid, non formulaic way of attending to your self care, because I really didn't want self care to be something that feels rigid and like it's just one more thing on your to do list because our needs are constantly changing and we're all individuals. So what you might need one week could be very different to what you need the next week or what you need could be completely different to what I need, for example. So what I suggest you do is once a week, just set aside a block of time that you know is for your self care. So whether that's one evening a week or a few hours on the weekend or something like that, you know that that is there for, for you. And what you decide to do during that block of time is up to you. What I would suggest is that you have a little check in with yourself. Just keep an eye on, your, on yourself throughout the week. Notice how you're feeling. Notice what, what it is that you might need. And then adapt that block of time to meet that particular need. So I'll give you some examples. Let's say you've had a particularly exhausting week and you're feeling really tired and drained. One thing you might want to do on your self-care evening is just go to bed and have an early night. Just switch the phone off. Put your pajamas on, hop into bed at 7, 7.30 with a good book and a cup of tea and just give yourself that early night. And that's going to help meet that need for rest that you really crave. Another example would be, um, let's say you're feeling a bit stiff and achy and you feel like you just need to really relax. Maybe you've been a bit uptight or a bit anxious. You might want to do quite an in-depth restorative type of yoga class or a yin yoga class which is a little bit more um, relaxing and slow and deep or perhaps you've got a bit of an urge to be creative you know you're a bit tired of just watching tv or you know relaxing in other ways and you've got an urge for self-expression maybe you want to engage in a craft or some kind of creative hobby and just express your creativity another thing that i think is really important is to especially if you're starting to meditate and starting to get in contact with your inner self, you're, you're probably going to find that you're a lot more aware of your emotions and feelings. And this is a really good thing. Um, unfortunately, a lot of us are conditioned to just block them out, try to run away from them or distract yourself from your feelings. But what you may want to do is if you notice that you've got something coming up, is just dedicate your self-care time to let yourself feel however it is that you're feeling. You know, maybe you want to do some free flow journaling and just write out your feelings or uh, do some kind of guided meditation where you process the feelings or even do some, some drawing or painting, just express those feelings in a more creative way. But basically just allow yourself to be how you really are. Maybe you just need to cry or hit a pillow. Um, but just dedicate that time to addressing any feelings that you may have. So that's why I didn't want to give you anything kind of rigid or set in stone because it's good if you can use this time just to um, adapt to your feelings for that particular week, adapt to your needs for, for that particular week. So just make sure that you go with the flow and mix it up a little bit. Now, the other weekly self-care tool is what I call the weekly outreach. 
So I came up with this after I watched a really good TED talk by a scientist called Robert Walding. I don't know if it's Waldinger or Waldinger, <laughs> but anyway, you can Google it and it's called What Makes a Good Life. And it was really, really fascinating. It was one of the longest studies ever done, I think, over 75 years. Uh, it was done on boys and men from Boston. And what they did was they had 400 boys from a very privileged background uh, and 400 boys from more of an underprivileged, poorer background. And they followed them over their whole lives you know, over 75 years. And they were trying to figure out what makes people happy, what makes a good life. And they looked at things like, um, you know, economic opportunities, careers, education, um, you know, what kind of jobs they had, whether they had fame and recognition or whether they had very simple menial type jobs, um, if they were married or not, if they were sick or not. And what they found was it didn't matter if people went to Harvard and had a really prestigious job or if they were working as a labourer and had financial troubles their whole life. It didn't matter if they were rich, if they were poor, if they were sick, if they were healthy. The number one thing that came out of that study was that our biggest source of happiness is connected, fulfilling, supportive relationships with others. The people that had strong friendships and strong relationships with family were by far the happiest, no matter what their external life circumstances. So us human beings, we're mammals. We are wired to connect with other people. You know, in terms of prehistoric times, we've always lived in tribes and with other people. And unfortunately, life, um, modern day life, is becoming more and more insular, especially with social media and the internet. We're not really connecting enough face to face or at least over the phone even, voice to voice. So as soon as we start to become a little bit isolated and a little bit lonely, we're, we're not addressing our very core need for social connection and we can become very unhappy and even unhealthy. It affects our immune systems as well. So for that reason, I think an excellent self-care tool is to have a weekly outreach session where you just, that sounds really formal, a weekly outreach session, basically where you just connect with someone that you love in a, in a real way, not in a social media way, you know, where you go out and meet them, have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, or you, at least if you can't do that, talk to them on the phone or via Skype. So not, I'm not talking about Facebook messaging or anything like that. It's, it's got to be like a a real connection, not just typing into a computer screen. So your homework for this video, fairly simple. First of all, in your diary or calendar, block out a few hours or an evening this week and then every week for your weekly self-care check-in. And don't try to plan anything in particular because the whole idea is that you see how you're feeling when the time comes and address whatever need is arising at the time. And then make a list of some of your favorite people, especially ones you haven't spoken to for a really long time, and put someone in your diary to call this week or to go out with. So if you've got any questions or comments, please put them below. I'm always happy to answer them. And I will see you in the next video, which, which will be the final video in this uh, four-part self-care training. Okay, thank you. See you then.